exactly happening in Uganda to mark this day? Uh, good afternoon, Alicia. Indeed, it is World Refugee Day, and here in Uganda, uh, refugees have come from various refugee settlements. Most of them are on the borders uh, of Uganda and South Sudan uh, and Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo, and they have gathered in the capital, Kampala, where they have been dancing all day, uh, singing, uh, showcasing the various da uh, dances from their countries, but also uh, displaying entrepreneurial skills that they have been uh, taught here in Uganda. So we had uh, some refugees selling uh, beadwork, we had some selling carvings, we had some selling the African clothes, uh, just showing uh, what they have been able to learn and do while they're in the settlements here in Uganda. All right, so we also know that the United Nations Secretary General is in the Horn of Africa visiting some refugee camps. Tell us more about that visit. Well, we expect uh, Guterres, Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, to arrive here uh, tomorrow night. And then on Thursday and Friday, he will be uh, attending a summit on refugees. He's been called the Solidarity Summit uh, for Refugees. But before that, he will tour a settlement uh, that is hosting South Sudan refugees. Uh, right now, Uganda is hosting close to a million uh, refugees from South Sudan. And we understand every day 1,000 refugees are coming into Uganda uh, from South Sudan. The, re the, re the reason for his visit is to shine a light uh, on the situation here, uh, the, the, the pressure that it's putting on Uganda, hosting this huge number of refugees, and to also seek uh, money to be able to support Uganda, to be able to uh, support uh, education and health care uh, for the South Sudanese refugees, refugees from the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, who are settled here in Uganda. Mm, Sarah, speaking of the figures now, 1.3 million refugees in a span of just three years. I mean, what a huge number. What perpetuated these numbers, Sarah? I mean, besides, of course, the civil unrest in their pr prospective countries. Well, uh, one of the things is uh, a famine. Uh, in, in, in South Sudan, apart from the war, there is a famine, and so a lot of people are being forced to move. Uh, but most, uh, most of those who have moved is, of course, because of war. Uh, Uganda uh, is neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. It is neighboring Burundi. And also South Sudan, all these countries have been affected by war for a long, long time. But now, most of the numbers that are coming into uh, Uganda are from South Sudan. They're talking about between 1,000 to 1,200 refugees every day coming from South Sudan. Most of them are women and a lot of unaccompanied children. All right. And Sarah, I mean, uh, looking at those numbers, I mean, how is Uganda coping? Is there additional aid coming in or solutions to resolve that impasse? I know you did touch on it a little bit uh, in, re in, in relation to that visit by Guterres, that he is going to be walking and seeing what they can actually offer as assistance to some of the refugee camps. We spoke to uh, the Minister for uh, in Refugees Settlements, uh, Hilary Onek, the Ugandan minister, and he was talking about every facility uh, being uh, overcharged. Uh, if I'm just to quote him, he was saying that uh, we are having overloaded services, infrastructure is overloaded, schools are overloaded, health centers are overloaded, the environment is destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so they're saying uh, there was an appeal that was made for $1.4 billion. That was only funded 18%. And so he says they need close to two billion shillings uh, to be able to, uh, sorry, not shillings, two billion uh, U.S. dollars to be able to assist uh, in humanitarian activities uh, that are needed uh, to make the refugees here uh, live in dignity. All right, Sarah, and finally, tell us about the upcoming summit on refugees. What can we expect? And we know that some countries abroad now are said to be breaching their agreements on taking their share of refugees, and this has instituted a number of actions against them, one of them being sanctions against those countries. Well, what we expect is that uh, Uganda will be asking for more funding. We actually uh, understand that they'll be saying that they need close to $8 billion 
uh, to be able to host the refugees. They'll also be asking that uh, they are recognized uh, for their progressive uh, refugee policy. Uganda opens its doors to every refugee, and they do not put them in uh, refugee camps like many countries. Instead, they give them land to farm. Uh, they make them uh, uh, attend schools like regular children in their countries, and they also provide them with health care. And if any of them gets a job, then they are allowed to work. So they will be seeking to be recognized for that. But they'll also be looking for money because they say if the money is not forthcoming, then they, they will be forced uh, to probably uh, put more pressure on the refugees to stay in their countries, even though they say that at this point they do not plan to shut their doors uh, to refugees who are in need. But they, they, they also say that their country cannot bear this burden of refugees on their own. Thank you so much for that update. That is SABC East African correspondent Sarah Kimani live to us on the line from Kampala in Uganda as we commemorate World Refugee Day. And she was giving us an update on Uganda's uh, refugee crisis.